Hi, this is John Kohler, and welcome to part three of Tech Topics, Enterprise Networking for Nutanix. This video is going to cover attaching a Nutanix node to a physical network. In previous videos, we've talked about network architectures, network cabling, and network adapters. In this diagram, I've drawn out two sections. One is our Nutanix node, and two is the physical network we're going to be connecting it to. Now, each Nutanix node runs an industry standard hypervisor from VMware, Microsoft, or Nutanix's own Acropolis hypervisor. For more information on Acropolis networking and virtual networking, check out our Acropolis networking series. So we've got a diagram here of a Nutanix host running a hypervisor, a vSwitch, several virtual machines, and several virtual networks. We also have two physical adapters and two physical switches. So you recall from the previous video, these are generally 10 gig adapters, and these are generally 10 gig switches. Network adapter one goes to network switch one. Network adapter two goes to network switch two, and the IPMI port goes to the management switch. Now, one very important topic is how redundancy is maintained within the virtual switching environment. This means that when one of these links goes away, how do these virtual workloads and applications stay connected to the network at large? Fundamentally, there are two options. Option number one is to have the virtual switch control the failover, and option number two is to have the network switch control the failover. Having the virtual environment and virtual switch control the, control the failover is generally the simplest because it allows you to maintain a plug and play type environment into these network switches. In a software or hypervisor controlled failover, if I lose one of these virtual links, all traffic will automatically be routed to the second virtual link. There will be a very, 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 very slight interruption in network packets as they flow from one uplink to the other. Most hypervisors will issue a reverse ARP, a gratuitous ARP, out the active link. So if link one fails, you'd have a reverse or gratuitous ARP go out of link number two to notify the upstream network that all of these virtual machines are now active on network link two. In option number two, configurations required on both sides of this diagram. Configuration examples on how to set up ether channel or LACP and all the various supported hypervisors are available in Nutanix's knowledge base and Nutanix's best practice guides. At a very high level, we have to set up the physical adapters on the host within the virtual switch to be in a bonded state. Likewise, similar configuration is needed on the physical switches. It's notable that an ether channel or LACP type configuration that spans two physical switches requires support on the physical switch for technologies like Cisco's virtual port channel, Arista multi-chassis link aggregation, or the equivalent technology from your network switch vendor. Once the configuration is completed on both the host and physical network side, these two links are, in effect, bonded together. This means that when any one of these links fail, we don't necessarily have to issue a reverse or gratuitous ARP because they form one logical link. Both option one, software-based teaming, and option two, hardware-based teaming, have their virtues. Again, it's typically easier to configure the environment with software-based teaming as it allows you to simply just plug into appropriately configured network switch ports and not have to worry about configuring both sides for a teaming operation. But really, the best option is going to be dictated by your specific requirements. Links to the various resources mentioned in this video will be in the description below. Thank you for watching Tech Topics.